Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part seven of building a real working exosuit. So the brief recap is we've built one elbow which I was holding just then which is capable of lifting uh, 20 kilograms or more right at the end of it. Probably estimate about three times more than that. And that's using lots of 3D printed gears and an RC brushless motor driver and a brushless motor. And the gears basically use pulleys and those blocks and tackles at the sides to spread the load over lots of 3D printed parts. So we don't need lots of metal parts and I can make all the parts on a 3D printer for relatively little money, which is quite key to getting the whole project done. So check out some of the earlier parts for that. We did some building, then we did some refinements to it. Last time I built the backpack essentially, which is gonna have the arm to move around in this axis. Uh, and we've still got two more axes to build, but I noticed that everything was getting quite heavy. So the plan is now to build some sort of base to put it on. And last time we had a poll in the video to decide whether that should be a wheeled base or whether I should build powered legs. And obviously if I do build powered legs, that's gonna take quite a lot of development, uh, but everyone voted for powered legs. So you can have a look at that poll in part six. Uh, but now we need to discuss how we're gonna build some exosuit power legs. So here's the plan, which as you'd expect if you've watched any of my leg projects is to build these parallelogram legs so that everything always stays level. And this is the same way some of my Android projects work. Only what I'm gonna do with this, because I need to fit inside it, is actually put them facing backwards. And they're probably gonna be uh, quite a bit more bent like that. So I'm sort of standing in here facing this way. This is the backpack of the suit. And I'm gonna have legs like this. And what I'm simply gonna do is uh, basically spring them upwards so that they're actually supporting the weight passively with a big spring in here or across here. So that holds the whole suit up and I can step in and out of it. And then when I want to take a step, essentially what I need to do is move my legs. Um, basically, I'm going to have a motor assist to actually bend the leg upwards and a foot on, on top of my, um, a switch on top of my foot. And when it's activated, it actually bends the leg, up, the leg upwards and then I can take steps. So um, basically, we need to build this mechanism strong enough to support the whole suit and the motor's gonna assist me in taking steps. Now we do have other axis in this as well, so that I can lean sideways, and also an axis so I can rotate the legs so I can turn on the spot and so on. So um, those are gonna be probably passive, but they're gonna be very heavily uh, sprung with bushings and springs, so that I don't just fall all the way over sideways, and this supports itself. I'm not quite sure what to do at the feet yet. Um, I think they may have to have other pivots, or they may just be touching the ground, and my foot is touching the ground, I'd also really like to be able to step out of this and move around a little bit so I can turn my body to orient it to bringing the arm out sideways, for instance. So uh, we need to make this and we need to have a look for some really strong springs. So I went and bought some suspension springs. I got these on eBay from China. They were pretty cheap. I've got a pair of them. And I thought, even though they're really strong, because uh, they're for a motorbike or a quad bike, if I put them right up at the uh, leverage point here, we'll have a much bigger leverage point for the motor, again with its blocks and tackles, to pull the leg shut. Well, that is really stiff. I can only just squash that, but it does have nitrogen um, gas in it, apparently. So this product is in fact, as well as a suspension spring, it's a shock absorber and there's a note on here saying contains uh, pressurized gas. Don't open it, it might explode. Um, there is a valve here, which I've already tried opening. So I guess you can pump it up even more if you want to. And you can screw this thing in to compress the spring even more. But um, basically I can't squash that and I'm not gonna risk drilling a hole in it because I don't want it to explode. Plus it's quite a nice thing. I might use it in another project. Oh, I love working out. Yeah, we still need to decide where to get some springs from. As usual, the thing's gonna be built out of wood, so I've cut eight bits of wood. They're actually each two two by ones stuck together. So now we need some more to make the tops, knees, and bottoms. Here's my basic layout for one leg. So we'll have pivot points at the bottoms and pivot points here, of course, and something to hold this so that it can actually pivot on the top and bottom piece. We're going to use these off-the-shelf brackets to make all the hinge points, which are made of, uh, looks like about one or two mil steel plate. 
We need to drill some more screw holes to fix them. And we're gonna drill out these big holes, which are about 11 mil to 12 mil to use M12 studding for all of the hinge points. Um, they're not gonna move very fast. So I'm not gonna bother with bearings on these. I'm pretty sure they'll just rotate fine with that massive leverage angle. Screwed on a few of these plates. I probably need some additional screw holes because the screws are right on the edge, but essentially that's the spacing and then my leverage parts come like this. So I've got loads of my brackets installed. The basic scale of this thing is that will be the foot. Then we have one of these here coming to about my knee height. That's the knee piece. So if you can imagine me standing this way round, and then this comes up to my hip height. So the legs are gonna be really quite bent all the time. And obviously they bend even further when they pick up. So uh, hopefully that leverage angle isn't too bad. It's never gonna come straight. So I think this is gonna be pretty good. So we need to get some uh, holes in here to make the hinges and some nice bits of studding through there. And then we can assemble one leg and see how it looks. Here's my first joint. So I've got a bit of 12 mil studding with some lock nuts attached to the piece of wood in the middle and attached on the outside. So that holds it nice and sturdy. And uh, there's a tiny bit of play, but basically most of the force isn't around these joints, of course, it's at the other end on the big spring. Right, so here's one leg together. Obviously this thing isn't fixed in right now. I need to fix it one way or the other and put a pivot point in so it can move all around. But of course this thing can move backwards and forwards as I take steps. And it's sprung upwards by, this, by the uh, spring here. So this, uh, will shrink down and this should support the backpack here while I'm standing nearer the front. And that's so this piece doesn't get in the way of my arm as I move it around. And I've got this platform that's gonna support the whole suit. So I actually had to make these sticks slightly shorter. It was far too long before, but we've still got plenty of space to put extra springs in if we need them and plenty of places to put the motor that's gonna pull this up. So as I take steps, this actually shrinks down, but it pulls the foot up so I can get my foot off the ground and we need some pivot points so I can lean side to side. So I'm feeling pretty happy with this as a kind of basis to continue. I think the idea is gonna work okay. Obviously I'm still using my own balance to actually walk and this is just power assisted leg lifting. So I've just made this cradle on one end here out of a bit of metal that holds a pivot point and I've got one of those on both ends. So now we can pivot this off the other bits of wood. Just made that hinge point with a plate on each side. So now I've got this at the top and bottom. Right, so I've got that in. Seems to work pretty well. It does tend to fall backwards, so um, probably what I need, in fact, is a spring across there to push this bottom part forward to hold it upright. We'll have to see how that goes based on the loading. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. What we need now is a motor, of course. So just try and shrink that a bit. It only has to do it enough for me to take little steps. So I think the gearbox I built before is gonna work with those pulleys and things. So let's have a look at some gears and see where we're gonna fit this in here to pull across. I just wanted to add that I am quite aware this is knocked together out of wooden things and you know it's pretty much quite makeshift but I really want to check the concept works if I can actually make these power assist legs before I go and use any more expensive materials and that's why I use wood largely for this project because it's quite cheap it's easy to screw brackets onto and so on so obviously if this whole thing turns out to be amazing we could go back and refine some of the stages and I've still got those two arm axes to build so I'll have to see how that goes but for now this is what we're going to work with. So my gearbox is gonna be very similar to the uh, rest of the axis with the three gears in and the pulley gear there, which pulls a string. Obviously we don't need two sets of blocks and tackles in this one. We're only gonna pull the leg shut and the spring will return it. So it's pretty simple. I've changed the shape of these plates slightly um, and laid them out there flat for printing. And those are gonna be ABS and the gears again will be Tormann alloy as before. Here comes one of them. The parts are about 14 mil high, so I'm hoping they're not gonna warp. I have printed similar parts before and they were fine, but we'll come back a bit later and see how it's going. We're nearly there. This has been just over three hours and so far so good, no warping. Right, so we've got two sets printed, one for each leg. And we've got all of the gears printed again. So these have been printed in Tormann alloy. And um, I've got two sets of those, one for each side. And they've been printed on the Taz straight on the glass with a glue stick. So the bottoms on those are properly flat. 
and they will all run true. So just piecing my gearbox together, we've got studding spacing out the two halves. We've got all the gears running on four mil stainless and they're a pretty good fit now. I've got pretty good at uh, getting the tolerance right. And the big gear here, even though it's on studding, is actually running on bearings that fit into the recess on each side. So that is uh, the studding turns with the gear and the gear turns against the bearing, so everything should run pretty well. We've got one more stage to put on, which has the pulley on. Right, so both my gearboxes are together and they look pretty good. So this runs pretty well. Obviously the motor will go on top here somewhere. I need to make a bracket for that next. But uh, basically these are running pretty well. They run pretty smoothly and they seem pretty tight with a little backlash. So pretty happy with that. Pretty happy that I can pretty much make any gears I want with 3D printing. I can make a gear that's half pulley and half gear or half gear and half pulley to any dimensions I want and they're strong enough as I've proven in the other episodes. So that's pretty good, it costs next to nothing and these motors are about 10 or 12 pounds so for a high power gearbox I'm pretty happy with these results. Obviously we've got one for each leg so let's get that motor mounted and hopefully we can mount this somewhere in the leg now. I have a plan for where it's going to go where it won't get squashed as the leg bends and we can get on and see if it's strong enough to pull that spring up. So as before, we're going to make a motor on a pivot uh, there, which is going to be one of the bits of 6mm studding I'll have to make longer. And it will pivot round, and there's a groove here which will put a 4mm bolt in so we can tension the motor and the belt against that pulley. The motor can also move uh, sideways, and it's going to be held in with a bolt through the top there to clamp it. So pretty much the same we did last time. It's a bit wider this time so that it fits um, over where it's going to be attached. So um, I'm actually going to print these in uh, symmetrical parts, even though I've put the motors together the same. The uh, pulley's pretty much in the middle, so we can make symmetrical things, and the motors will face outwards on each leg. I'm printing one pair on this printer and the opposite pair on another printer, so uh, I know these parts print fine, even though they're pretty tall and they're all ABS. Probably got another half an hour left on the print and it's looking good so far. Okay, so my idler is fitted with the motor and everything seems to run pretty well, so let's just power that on. Just running it off this RC uh, set for now. Great, and obviously we're using the motor driver there from Hobby King, which has got forward and reverse. So that seems... Seems to run pretty well. So the plan is going to be to put the gearbox, in fact, in here, like this. So uh, basically we're going to need to pull down this point to the bottom, so we're going to put a pulley in here. The string here, of course, on the fast low force side can go round there, and then we'll have the top section of our block and tackle there. So this is fine as long as I can move the leg forward enough to walk here without crashing the gearbox, and we can also push this down a bit of course it will lift up and that doesn't crush the gearbox for taking the steps which I think is going to be okay. So here are my pulley blocks they're again uh, Tallman alloy parts so they're pretty tough we've got a hole there for the string to go down and the pulley is mounted on a piece of 8mm studding with a bearing either side so it's a bit like the way a skateboard wheel works and of course just to emphasize this is on the fast low full side before it gets to the blocks and tackles that actually pull it. So this is the same kind of mounting we've got on that pulley shaft on the output of the gearbox and it will bear the same load. So I've got my pulley assembly mounted on the back, the gearbox goes further down here and I've got a hole all the way through the wood there, hopefully you can see, and that aligns perfectly with the gears on the bottom which are the first stage of the block and tackle. So there's the hole and that pulley aligns perfectly with the groove in this pulley and then obviously the strings come off this onto the bottom block and tackle pulley set. So we just need to mount the gearbox up and get that strung up. Right, so my gearbox is mounted. I've just made some little brackets that uh, grip onto the studding. Those are Tallman alloy as well, so they should be more than strong enough. So my string goes from the pulley round this pulley, and then I've got my blocks and tackles there, which actually do most of the pulling to pull the spring up. So I'm just stringing this up with all the strings, and I can tell straight away just by pulling the end here that uh, this is going to be more than strong enough to pull this up. So uh, obviously I need to... Uh, tie this end off, it's got another pulley to go around yet and we can reduce pulleys to make it faster um, then we can power up the motor and hopefully that'll do exactly the same. Right, here's first go with the motor, let's just see if that gearbox is strong enough to uh, pull this big spring down here. Ah oh, yes, it's more than strong enough, really no problem at all. 
Yeah, I might have to cut off these black things on the, uh, on the spring here, because eventually they hit the pulley, but I don't think they do anything apart from an end stop. And it really doesn't have to bend very far for me just to take a little step to get my foot off the ground. Probably not even that much. So I think the speed is probably okay. And of course this is actually going to be picking the foot off the ground rather than the top going down unless I use both of them to crouch down. So pretty happy with that altogether. And yes, I have been making two of these as I've been going along so I don't need to come back next time and make the other leg. I've run out of paracord so I can't string the other one up but they're pretty much identical apart from the motor mounts which are of course um, the opposite. So the motors are on the outside. So uh, basically you have to just imagine that these are linked together somewhere around my hips and I've got kind of stirrups with my feet in and as I pick up my feet it switches the motors and brings each one up. There'll of course be position feedback on the joints so that I can uh, define end stops and I can also control it manually with a PID controller with a little joystick so I can sort of scroll down and crouch down or come back up again. So uh, next time we're going to be fitting these together with a backpack and putting in some axis so I can lean like this and so I can rotate the legs outwards so that I can turn on the spot as I demonstrated with the little model at the beginning. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects and also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Also don't forget to check out my t-shirt store for a limited edition X-Robots design which expires at the end of March 2017. You can check out the links in the description for all of those. Alright, that's all for now.